These are the best iPhone camera settings that you should use when taking photos and videos with your iPhone 15 or any iPhone for that matter. I'm always trying to find ways to get the best results possible from my iPhone camera. And these settings do make a big difference, so I wanna share them with you. Just a few things before we get started. I'm using the regular iPhone 15 for this video, so if you have an older iPhone, some of these settings might not be available to you, but just go through all of them and adjust the ones that are available for your model. Also, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro, that phone has a few settings that are not available online, but I will make sure to go through all of them and explain how and when to use them. Okay, let's do it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is jump into settings, scroll down to camera, record video. And here I'm usually using the 4K 30 option, but you can use 24 as well. Depends on which one you like more, but I feel like 30 FPS is the best to go for like social media, YouTube, stuff like that. Next, we have an option to show PAL formats. This basically just gives you an additional option of shooting at 25 frames per second. And in my opinion, it's really not necessary. It used to be like a standard in Europe while NTSC was used in the United States. Doesn't really matter. I still suggest shooting at 4K 30 in most situations. Going down the list, we have have enhanced stabilization on. Action mode lower light is off for me, uh, as is HDR video. I don't really like the way uh, iPhone's HDR video looks, so I just keep it off. Again, that is something that you can adjust for yourself if you want to. I just don't like shooting it, so I keep it off. Auto FPS is off, lock camera is off, and here at the bottom we have lock white balance. And that's to me one of the most important features that Apple added to all iPhones running iOS 17. And that actually keeps your phone from uh, switching white balance while shooting video. So for example, if you're panning from one side to the other where the scene is changing, the white balance would also change. So you would have an image that would at some points look a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, green, and it just wouldn't be consistent. But if you turn this feature on in iOS 17, it locks the white balance uh, as it is at that point, And that just makes everything nice and even when it comes to color. Now we're gonna go back to camera. Slow-mo, I don't actually use, so I just left it at default. 1080p, 120 FPS, cinematic mode, I'm also not a huge fan of, so it's also on 1080p 30, but maybe I'm gonna use it in the future, so I'm just gonna switch that right now to 4K 30 as well. Now, in formats, I keep camera capture at high efficiency. Now, if you're using, for example, a Windows laptop, something like that, you might wanna choose most compatible because that's gonna switch it to JPEG, and uh, that is the format that's much more accepted across different devices. But if you are using Apple stuff, high efficiency is the best option. Photo mode, we're gonna keep it 24 megapixels to get the best resolution possible. And here we're gonna switch on resolution control, which basically just lets you control the different resolutions of photos within the camera app itself. Now, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, instead of just resolution control, you would see Pro Raw and resolution control. And it just basically gives you another toggle to switch the Pro Raw on in the camera app, as well as switching the resolution. And on the 15 Pro, you also have one additional option below called Pro Default, and you can set that to Pro Raw Max. That will give you the best maximum resolution for your raw images. And one more thing that the 15 Pro does have that I don't have on my regular 15, you would see the option below all these called Apple ProRes. So if you wanna record an Apple ProRes, you can only do that on Pro models hence the pro name. And you can definitely leave that option on as well so you can change the settings within the app. And again, for ProRes, you wanna choose the log ProRes recording option for best quality. We're gonna go back and then to preserve settings. So all of these options basically just let you preserve particular settings within the camera app so you don't have to toggle them back on or off every time you use the app. If you turn this off for any particular feature, it would basically revert it to default when you exit the app and, and uh, open it up again. So here I have creative controls on, exposure adjustment, portrait zoom, and live photo are the options that are on, but again, you can set this up to your liking. And the options below here are record stereo sound is on, volume up for burst is also on, that's actually a useful feature that I use quite a lot. And scan QR codes and show detected text is on. But just an additional thing that's kind of useful sometimes when using the camera. And here in the composition section, I would definitely recommend turning on the grid and level options. Uh, grid basically just kind of splits your screen into thirds so you can frame the shot better. While level is also a new feature in iOS 17, that just kind of uh, shows you this level in the middle of the screen to see if your shot is straight. So it also helps you frame the shot a bit better and see if everything is flat and well, leveled. Below that, mirror front camera is off, 
uh, and view outside the frame is off. Down below here, we have photographic styles. I just kind of leave it at standard because this just does even more post-processing and I want my shots to look as natural as possible. Portraits in photo mode are on, which is also a new feature on iPhone 15s that captures depth information automatically if a person, dog, or cat is in a frame. So you can basically just blur the background of your photos later on in the app if you want to, and you can kind of switch between and see which one you like more. So this is the option that I usually have on, and then kind of tinker with it later. You can see this F icon that says portrait in photos where the depth information is captured. And as you can see here, you can just blur the background later on if you want to. And here, uh, prioritize faster shooting and lens correction is also on. So now we're gonna go into the camera app itself and just kind of show you the setup there. So here we're in the photo section. Uh, I usually uh, keep mine in 1X. If you have an iPhone 15 Pro, you would have an option for different focal lengths. Uh, in my opinion, I would just leave it at default, but you can play around with that and see which one you like most. There's actually a cool little feature that I don't think a lot of people know about, and that is that you can swipe up on the screen here to reveal additional options or just click this arrow at the top. And here you can see the flash, I keep that off. Night mode, I keep it default. Here on the right side, you have the option for resolution control. And like I said, if you have the 15 Pro, you will have the Pro Raw option here as well. On the regular iPhone 15 here, we can just switch between the regular 12 megapixel shot and the full 24 megapixel shot. While on the 15 Pro, you would have two additional options, which is shooting raw at 12 or 24 megapixels. And with these additional settings down there, my flash, like I said, is off. Night mode is on auto. Here you can change the exposure, those photographic styles, change your aspect ratio for photos, set a timer, some filters and stuff like that. So most of these things, I just leave at default. I just turn the live photos off and you can definitely tinker with a lot of these things a bit more. But when I'm using my iPhone to take photos, I just kind of want it to be quick and simple and easy. So I just want to take out my phone and be able to shoot as fast as possible. And setting it up this way allows me to do that. And here in the video tab, like I said, I shoot at uh, 4K 30. You can change the frame rate here on the right. And that's basically it. I don't use a lot of these other options like portrait. Like I said, I use very rarely a uh, cinematic mode as well. If you have the 15 Pro or Pro Max, keep in mind that if you are shooting raw and if you're shooting a uh, ProRes video uh, in log, you will definitely have to edit those photos and videos later on to get the desired results. So if you don't want to mess with that, I would actually recommend turning the Pro Raw and ProRes options off and just take it with the default max resolution and that should be just fine. Also, if you need a case for your iPhone, you should definitely check out Pitaka with their uh, Mag Easy Case 4. This video is not directly sponsored by them, but I really do love their products and they sent me this case to check out, so shout out for that. These are really, really thin MagSafe compatible cases. So if you want like an ultra slim, ultra light case, this is a really cool choice. Also, these come in a 100% biodegradable packaging. They have like really nice cutouts for your volume buttons, mute switch below, for the charger and speakers and everything. And there's also a raised lip around the whole screen and the camera bump is also raised a little bit so you're protected there as well. So I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. And you know what? Video over.